Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Now today we're going to be looking at how I managed to get Diego to lose weight. It's quite funny because oftentimes people are looking at ways to get their gecko to eat and gain weight but you'd be surprised how many people actually struggle to get their overweight reptiles to lose weight because reptiles are pretty resilient and even in times where food is scarce they're good at slowing down their metabolism and retaining fat stores. So yeah, this isn't always the easiest thing to pull off, but I did manage to get Diego down from 108 grams to 98. So in today's video, I'm going to tell you how I did it, what and when I fed him, and what signs to look out for if you are concerned that your gecko may be overweight. And if you're here because you think your gecko may be overweight or you just like leopard gecko content, be sure to boop that like button as it helps get the video out to more people in need of advice. Now firstly, we want to rule out any medical condition your gecko may have that might be causing it to look quite bloated. These conditions include a female gecko carrying fertile eggs, impaction and ascites, which is a buildup of fluid in the abdomen. If you are concerned about your gecko's health, please consult an exotics vet. Next, what causes reptiles to become obese? It's quite simple, in comparison to the wild, they don't have to expend as much energy, therefore they don't need as much food. In the wild, they would spend a lot of time seeking out and hunting down food, and daily food is certainly not a guarantee for many animals in the wild. Not only that, but we have an array of feeder insects available to us that our geckos probably wouldn't come across in the wild, and some of them really aren't healthy. For example, Waxworms and Morio worms should only be fed occasionally as treats. One to three of these worms should be enough per feeding. Sadly, I have seen cases in reptile shops where they will feed leopard gecko bowls of undusted waxworms. I guess this makes the geckos appear healthy to an untrained eye because their tails are plump, but really this is an extremely unhealthy diet. Another thing to consider is, is your gecko exposed to the correct temperatures? If it's too cold, then the gecko isn't going to be very active, it may not even eat very much, and it could go into a sort of partial brumation, which you normally only see over winter. So make sure you have a decent heater and thermostat, and your gecko has a basking area of around 90 degrees. So four main things to take away from that, don't overfeed your geckos, don't feed them too many treats too often, Make them move for their food. Leaving heaps of worms in a bowl or tongue and hand feeding too much can just make them lazy. And make sure they're exposed to the correct temperatures. I asked over on Instagram if any of you guys had overweight geckos so I could sort of feature some of the images or videos in this video and hopefully also help your gecko lose weight. Now I thought I might get one or two replies but I got quite a few and I think this shows is quite a common problem. Brett, who works at Reptile Rescue here in the UK, sent these photos of Potter the leopard gecko. And he says that they see so many obese leopard geckos. Now I can only imagine that somewhere along the line, someone hasn't maybe done the best research or they got some major misinformation around feeding, like free feeding geckos every day as much as they can eat in 15 minutes. Well, in theory, yeah, if you've got fast moving food for 15 minutes, it's gonna get them moving, it's gonna get them after their food. But I'm pretty sure my geckos could devour a whole tub of waxworms in less than 15 minutes, and that would be terribly unhealthy for them. Chloe sent in this photo of Bonnie, her rescue gecko, who was constantly free fed Morio worms by her previous owner. Once again, Morio worms, super worms, giant worms, those kind of things definitely should not be part of the main diet. As well as this email, I did notice quite a few people were concerned about their geckos because sure, they did look on the bulkier side, but like Diego, they weren't exactly obese, but they did weigh a lot. And I think it's good to keep in mind that for some geckos, 100 grams is actually healthy, whereas for others, the 50 gram mark might be healthy for them. For example, Diego, who will be 11 this month, since 2017, I'd say his average weight has been between 95 and 105 grams. Gizmo, my eldest female leopard gecko, would range between 55 and 65 grams. Now, if Gizmo suddenly weighed 80 grams, sure, she would still be lighter than Diego, but she'd probably be classed as overweight. So you can't always rely on the numbers to tell you if your gecko is healthy. Sometimes you've got to observe them. So does your gecko look more pear-shaped rather than streamlined? Keep in mind, healthy females carrying eggs may look a little bit like a pear. Uh, is their tail looking like it's about to burst? Does your gecko have a bit of a double chin or chubby legs? Does it have rolls? Does its belly touch the floor when it walks? Is it lethargic? Does it have armpit boobs? Now, these can occur. 
I feel like some geckos are more likely to get them and they don't always get them just because they're overweight because it is where they store minerals, which is such a weird place. But I do notice they seem to be more common in geckos that are quite chunky. And when the gecko starts to lose weight, they do start to go down or they do disappear for a while. So maybe keep an eye on that. Also, do they struggle to turn around or remove skin while shedding? I know Diego for a little while kept missing the patch near his vent and I know that must be a tricky place to get anyway but I honestly think part of it was he was quite chunky and it was a bit of a struggle to get around there and peel it off. Now overweight reptiles may seem cute in memes but actually being overweight not only puts stress on their skeletal and muscular systems but also on their organs and can lead to fatty liver disease as well as many other illnesses so it is really important that we get our geckos to maintain a healthy weight. Now, Diego hit his highest point in August 2021 when he hit 108 grams. Now, sure, this was only 3 grams above his healthy range, but I know how hard it can be for a gecko to lose weight, and I didn't want him to continue gaining. Now, he did manage to drop to 106 grams by the start of this year, so, you know, it was coming down a tad, but he was just looking a bit on the chunky side, you know, he needed to tone up a bit and I wanted to get him down to the 90s. So starting in January, I decided I was going to make it my mission to get Diego down from that high of 108 grams to a healthy 98 grams. Before I tell you how I did this, I did just want to give a shout out to the people who really support this channel through Patreon and as a YouTube member, I recently made this cool Lego wall art in the reptile room where everyone who supports the channel's name can be displayed. We have a range of new cool tiers on Patreon and if you ever need my advice in some of those tiers, you can literally contact me directly whenever you want. So if you want help and you want to support the channel and you want your name up on this wall, then please consider becoming a patron or a YouTube member. Anyway, back to Diego, so what I did may shock you. I know some people will only feed their leopard geckos maybe once every two or three weeks and their weight won't even budge, but I think this is where you're going wrong. So I'm going to list the dates plus what food I gave Diego since January, and you may be a tad surprised. Now, it wasn't super restrictive. And it wasn't just one kind of food, he did have some treats in there too, and in fairness, he probably had too many worms. On average in January, he was fed every three days, February every four days, and March every three days. I always say to feed your adult geckos every three to four days, so that kind of makes sense. But I feel like what this shows you is you don't have to completely restrict your gecko's diet. I'm not a scientist, obviously, and I only have Diego to back me up, so take this as you will. But I feel like if your gecko is only fed maybe once every two or three weeks, then its body might think, Oh god, food is scarce, I need to seek out a cooler place, I need to preserve the fat um, and slow down my metabolic rate. Whereas a consistent or sometimes kind of inconsistent feeding schedule, you'll see sometimes I left it for seven days, whereas other times I left it for two days. This kind of keeps them on their toes. Once again, not a scientist, I could be completely wrong here. <laughs> But I'd feed him fairly regularly and decrease the number of insects he got. For example, with crickets and locusts, I'd probably recommend aiming for five to eight crickets per feeding, eight being the ideal amount. With Diego, he was only getting four or five. He used to get three Mario worms or three wax worms as a treat, whereas now he only gets one or two. Some people will choose to completely cut these out too, which is absolutely fair enough. So I think there's something to be said about continuing to feed your gecko so the body doesn't go into survival mode, but just lowering the quantity of the food, getting them to move for their food as well is really important and making sure the temperature's correct. Also, maybe stick to lower calorie foods. As I said, I probably did give him a tad too many worms, but how can you resist this little face? It'd be really interesting to hear if you've managed to get your gecko to lose weight, how did you do it? I know I got this email from Caitlin who increased the size of her gecko's tank, increased the temperature a little, and it took that and feeding small portions once a week for two years to get her gecko squib to lose weight. So there are definitely multiple ways of doing this. I think this with Diego went down really quickly. I was quite surprised we hit the goal as soon as we did. Uh, but I know he didn't have to lose a ton of weight. 10 grams is still a lot, but he still is pretty healthy and he's got enough chunk on him. Anyway, leave your comments below. I always love to read and reply to them. But yeah, if this video has helped, boop that like button. But thank you for watching, guys, and goodbye.